All right, 16.9 other heterocycles um, or other heterocyclics. Um, so remember, a heterocycle is a compound that has uh, a non-carbon atom inside the ring. Okay, so this is technically is not a heterocycle. I would not consider that a heterocycle uh, because there's a carbon group. Okay, uh, but all these are aromatic. So are they aromatic? There's six pi electrons. The electrons here in the nitrogen are preoccupied. Six pi electrons. Here's furan. So I talked about this in the last slide. Two lone pairs. One lone pair is preoccupied. The other lone pair is not. They kind of show you this. Okay. And again, it's pretty interesting. This looks like an sp3 hybridized atom, but technically it's not, which makes it very interesting. And the reason is because these lone pairs are preoccupied. Okay. So even though you don't see a double bond here, there kind of is a double bond here. Okay. A double bond, double bond. There kind of is a double bond because these lone pairs are preoccupied. So because of these, uh, because of the fact that this is aromatic, it kind of changes the hybridization of an atom. Okay. And these lone pairs are sticking out. Same thing for a thiophene, which is the sulfur equivalent. Okay. All right, let's do a little bit of a test. Is the molecule below aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? Okay. So let's go through the criteria. First criteria, cyclical. Yes. Second criteria, uh, do you have a conjugated system? Yes. Okay, I got pi bonds here. Technically, I'm sorry, p. Yeah, well, pi bonds, and then this, this, these lone pairs are going to be preoccupied in the resonance. That hydrogen is going to stick out. Number three, is it planar? Assume yes. Again, it might not be, but five-membered rings usually are planar. So number four, how many pi electrons? Two here, two here, and then these two are also preoccupied in here, so that's another two. That's six pi electrons. That follows my four n plus two plus two plus two. Uh, therefore, yes, that is an aromatic compound. All right, I got it. Good job, Steve. Pat myself on the back. All right, <laughs> um, so hopefully by now you, you kind of have a really good understanding of how you determine if something's aromatic or not, okay? Uh, 16.10, now the rest of the chapter just kind of talks about uh, different types of aromatic compounds. All right, these are what's called polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons, meaning you have more than one uh, aromatic compound on your ring, okay? Um, I believe this compound, I can't remember the, uh, anthracene, that's what it is, anthracene. Also, naphthalene, which we saw before, naphthalene is two aromatic rings hooked to each other. That's naphthalene. Naphthalene. Um, this is actually mothballs. That's the main ingredient in mothballs. I think anthracene might be in it too. Okay. Uh, but these are also aromatic compounds. I mean, I mean, this is aromatic. This is aromatic. This is aromatic. Um, you don't really say the whole thing is aromatic. You just say because all the rings are, therefore the whole thing is. Okay. So here's naphthalene, just kind of showing you all of the Keculae structures. Okay, fused rings share two atoms and the bond and the bond between them. Naphthalene is the simplest fused aromatic hydrocarbon. Larger polynuclear aromatic. Now you have to you don't have to memorize these. Naphthalene and anthracene, you should probably know what those look like. But all these other ones, it, this is more just for your interest. Okay. Um, again, I mean these are pretty cool looking compounds. Um, they kind of show you that these are found in tobacco smoke. I mean, by looking at them, you can probably figure, yeah, these probably are not things that I should be consuming. Um, so here's just, you know, just shows you that these are where these compounds are, are, are found. Okay. Uh, many are carcinogenic. Um, epoxides do form on them and they combine with your DNA. Uh, uh, there's a, um, a lot of people who smoke, smoke a lot age very quickly okay you can see someone who smokes that you know th they might be in their 40s but they look like they're in their 60s okay this is one of the main reasons why what happens is that these things epoxidize inside the body so you can form this epoxide right here all right 
and that's extremely reactive. It re reacts with your DNA, and it starts breaking down your DNA, or it or it kind of puts in a lot of um, uh, mutations in your DNA. And uh, our skin, obviously, is uh, uh, um, you know is made so you know so frequently that this actually affects a lot of uh, the DNA that codes for our skin. So um, here's kind of like the chemistry behind why a lot of smokers age much quicker. Okay, uh, 16.11 are allotropes of carbon. What's an allotrope? An allotrope is just other forms of carbon. So there are three, uh, technically there are four forms of carbon. Okay, there's diamond, there's graphite, and then there's something called a fullerene or a buckyball, which we will see a little bit in the slides. But these are just other forms of carbon, all right? A diamond, basically, is uh, are single carbons in a tetrahedral formation bonded to, uh, bonded to other carbons. And then each of those are bonded to carbon. So you can kind of see, so, it, uh, so it's not a flat, it, it's, um, it's kind of a, and all these are in chair conformations. It's kind of like a chair conformation. That's actually a, b a better way of saying it. You, you can kind of see, if you look here, you can see a six-membered ring right there of carbons that's hooked to another six-membered ring, okay? And uh, so it's kind of a chair of carbons bound to each other. We've learned chair conformations are very stable, okay? Well, you have chair conformations of carbon stacked on top of each other. It makes it incredibly hard. All right, carbon is a very hard, I'm sorry, uh, a diamond is a very hard s substance because they're carbons in chair conformations, okay? Um, and, and graphite uh, is the same thing. It's carbon, but it's, a, but it's basically a bunch of aromatic rings. It's a bunch of uh, benzene rings, so you can kind of see it's planar, and they stack on top of each, each other. Graphite is actually also a pretty strong um, uh, compound. They've been actually showing that graphite can actually carry electricity through it um, because of the pi bonds. If you, put, if you expose electricity to it or electrons, the electrons just travel through all the pi bonds. Okay, so this is just, so a, a graphene is a single layer of graphite. There's a lot of this research that's been just going around with a single layer of graphite, which has been shown to be used as a as like a circuit. Um, so kind of interesting stuff that's going on. Okay, so small particles of graphite, charcoal, soot, coal, or carbon black is amorphous forms of carbon, meaning it's all it's all these all combined. Um, uh, so a diamond is a tetrahedral carbon, but it's in these chair conformations, and graphite are these layers of fused aromatic rings. Um, here's just kind of more uh, information of diamond. So a diamond is basically one molecule, okay? If you have a diamond, it's one molecule. So think about that, okay? Think about a diamond you have, your earrings, a ring, a bracelet. It's one molecule, okay? I'm emphasizing that because I think that's fascinating, okay? Um, and uh, it's because all these carbons are hooked all together, all right? Um, they are tetrahedral carbons or SP3 hybridized carbons. Uh, here's just uh, like the size of the bonds. It's not that important. Um, it's uh, an el electrical insulator, meaning that it does not carry electricity through it. Okay, graphite. Here's graphite. Planar layered structures. So you got a bunch of these structures piled on top of each other. Um, so layer is, is a fused. Again, we don't have to worry about the bond lengths. Uh, they're held together by van der Waal forces, which would make sense because you have nonpolar uh, uh, bonds. Um, they do conduct electricity, okay? Uh, but, the, but the graphene, which is a single one of these. So imagine if you take graphite and you just strip away all the layers, all the layers, until you get one single layer. That's what graphene is. A new, so here's, they call it a new allotrope. This has been out like 25 years. Uh, you know, I don't know what you, at what point you consider new or not. Um, is a buckyball or, or fullerenes. And basically it's, um, it, it basically looks like a soccer ball of carbon. That's all, it's a bunch of aromatic rings wrapped around each other. And then there's actually a nanotube, which is basically a buckyball. Imagine if you cut this in half, okay, if you cut it in half, and you get rid of this and then attach graphite onto here. 
the, the straight single layer. So it's kind of like, y y you know, if you cut this off, you have graphite or graphene, I guess is better because it's single layers, followed by half of a, a buckyball attached to it. That's kind of what um, a nanotube is. Okay, so a, a fullerene is a five or six membered ring arranged to form a soccer ball structure. Okay, what they mean by five and six membered rings, here's your six membered ring benzene, which kind of looks like it's making a five membered ring. It's not that you have a five membered ring, it's that you have five six membered rings fused together that look like are making, but that's actually a hole right there. Okay, and then a nanotube is half of a, of, a, uh, of a sphere fused by a cylinder of fused aromatic rings, which again is like graphene or graphite. All right, let's uh, pause there and we'll make this a video and then we will start the next video at 1612.